Hello and welcome to Tabletop Union. I'm Steve and today I will be unboxing and looking at the assembled models for Hexbane's Hunters for Warhammer, Warhammer Underworlds. They came out during the Nether Maze cycle and they are a very very cool looking warband and hopefully a taste of what the, they'll be doing with the humans going forward in Age of Sigmar. I was never a big fan of the old Empire look with the poofy pantaloons and arms. It's like the sleeves and the floppy hats. And these are much cooler looking. So it's six fighters. You got Hexbane and three of his guys. And this guy's the big muscle brute one. She's sort of the, the duelist. And this guy is the dog handler for these two dogs. Um, let's open it up. There we go. So with this one, I'm now caught up on the uh, Underworlds Warbands. I have them all. Uh, there's another one going out for pre-order next week that I'll be getting. And then after that, we'll probably be getting another box. I, I don't like how they do a big box and then just two more bands, then a big box and just two more bands. It's, I mean, it's obviously better money for them, but it's really wasteful. Anyways, so let's cut this open. Tear it apart. I like to start with looking at the instructions. And we'll look at some of the cards later. Here we go. So yeah, it looks like they're all all mostly like Five or so parts, except for the dogs, they're just two halves. They should go together pretty easily. Um, they're push fit models. And like I usually say, with push fit models, I like to generally snip off the pegs and glue them. Just doesn't feel right not gluing models together. And the pegs can sometimes uh, make for two, the allowances on it are not high enough so that if there's glue involved, they'll go together as tight as possible. So, what is that? Is it a big cardboard or something? So yeah, we got our sculpted bases. These are pretty cool. Looks like a wet dungeon tiles. With some fallen masonry and got a little skull in there. Here we've got the big guy's legs and his the front of his torso and his back. And uh, here we got a real good doggo, very good boy. And here's the big axe. We got some crossbow action going on too and a quiver. So look at the other one. So yeah, another very good boy. And here we have uh, Hexbane himself. So he'll be mostly on this sprue. We got someone very dynamically on a uh, Tactical Fallen Masonry there. 
cool. Now let's uh, take a look at the uh, rival deck for the Hexbane's Hunters. Haskell Hexbane and his band of mirthless followers are as ruthless as they are determined. They are members of the Order of Vizier, a Sigmarite organization dedicated to the rooting out and purging of evil across the mortal realms. This clandestine sect has sent Hexbane and his hunters deep within the nether maze to bring the burning light of Vizier to the very heart of that foul and, un and unnatural place, that they might scour it in the cleansing fires of justice and order. Though made of but human flesh and blood, Hexbane's hunters burn with conviction and bring with them the full might of humanity's ingenuity and artifice. But the shadows beware. So yeah, these are witch hunters. If we're looking at the uh, the old world, they're a band of witch hunters. But now they're they're just like evil hunters. The Order of Azir. So first is the big guy, Amos Duncaro. So he inspires if an enemy's Enemy fighter's attack action targets a friendly Haskell Hexbane. So he gets inspired if his boss gets hit. And he's got some abilities here. There he is inspired. Here we have Bridget Axwold, the kind of duelist. She's got dual axes and a volley pistol. And some very fancy looking hair sure it's in focus and she inspires if Haskell Hexbane is inspired and there is her inspired side and here's the first dog Grot Biter um, his master is called Quiet Pock and he inspires if Rat Spike which is the other dog and or Quiet Pock is out of action oh that's too bad Someone has to die for him to get inspired. Here we have Haskell Hexbane himself. He inspires if he takes an enemy fighter out of action. So he'll get inspired and then Bridget gets inspired at the same time, basically, if he takes someone out of action. Quiet Puck. He's the dog handler, and he's got a crossbow. And he's got the same inspired condition as the dogs, so a few of them is taken out of action. I would be pretty angry too. And finally, Rat Spike, the other goodest of boys. Or girl, you know. And inspired. And just a quick look at the cards. You can pause them to take a look if you want, or you go to warhammerunderworlds.com to look at the cards, or other websites on the internet. So there's going to be a lot of fire, a lot of mentions of holy stuff, crusades, and implements of uh, evil hunting goodness. Mm, yes, those blood wards. That's not sinister evil at all. Charmed Horseshoe. Uh, what, a, what a great upgrade, Deep Scars. Ooh, retractable Pistol, it's fun. <laughs> See, he, he looks Totally like a good guy. Uh, 
I think uh, Age of Sigmar, I think there's more uh, argument to say that there are good guys and bad guys than in 40k, but I have a feeling as the game matures, it'll become less and less uh, cut and dry. Code of Truth and Weapons of Justice. So yeah, the art on these, really good. I like the art a lot. And then there's additional universal cards, but we won't be looking at them. So I will go ahead and put these together. And uh, we'll see what they look like all, all finished. Be right back. Okay, so Hex Bane's Hunters are all put together. We'll start with uh, the leader, Haskell Hexbane. It's a really nice model, actually. Um, went together pretty good. Uh, this light gray plastic is nearly identical to working with regular GW plastic, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, lots of spikes, like wooden stakes. It's got two, like, flintlock pistols, um, the torch. Nice witch hunter motif going on. A little satchel on his back. Hammer for driving home with stakes. It's pretty cool. Up next, we've got the big man Amos. Uh, once again, went together pretty well. It's, uh, he's a big guy. Um, I guess he's not, he's, well, he's sort of crouched forward a little bit, but he's not that much bigger than Hexbane, but he's definitely bulkier. So he's not some giant mutant of a man. Pretty simple design, really. Uh, it's more interesting on the back, like the claw marks and the armor there. Um, just sort of the, the beaten iron look of his armor is also kind of cool. Up next we have Bridget. And yeah, she's cool. The connection point for the sprue was right at the tip of the gun, so I feel like I tried to get some holes going in there, but it wasn't really having much success. So kind of wish it wasn't right on the end because it obliterated. If there was any detail there, it obliterated it. Uh, yeah, she's got a very Germanic feel to her. Looks like she enjoys a good strudel. So do I. And I really like the, the sort of base. It's got her in a very dynamic pose. Yeah, it's like a tactical rock, but it's cool. Then we have Quiet Pock, the Houndmaster. Uh, he was probably the fiddliest one to put together. Uh, just trying to press everything... And I had to keep a lot of pegs on this guy just because there was stuff that sandwiched. Um, luckily, there was no problem lining up the arrow with the crossbow there. And he's got a cool, spooky metal mask. Guess that he is quiet, so don't need to hear him. And the first of the hounds, 
I believe this is Rat Spike. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a visible seam here. Put some more glue over top of it, like extra thin glue, and then after that's had a good time to dry, I'll file it and it should be nice and smooth. Otherwise, yeah. Good boy or girl. And then the other hound and last member of the war band, we got Grot Bite. Or Grot Biter. This is my favorite of the two, not just because of the name, which I think is the better name, but also I just love the little open mouth there. Looks like uh, they're ready to give a little howl. Uh, cute. So yeah, that was uh, Hexbane's Hunters. Um, I like the kit. They're, they got a really good look to them. If they do more of the human faction like these, then it'll be very nice. Very big upgrade compared to the old, like, poofy pantaloons and poofy shirts and floppy hats of the Empire. In my opinion. Anyways, let me know what you think of them down below. Um, like it if you can. If you want to subscribe, go right ahead. And I'll see you next time. Bye.